Hello, welcome to another session of RPA Fridays. This time, I want to cover how to integrate MongoDB into UiPath. As you maybe know, my name is Roman and I'm from Robot ICT, a company based in Czech Republic. I'm a developer and in a spare time I'm creating these videos. It used to be every Friday thing uh, as a live webinar, but now I decided to change the concept. I hope you will like it. I hope it will bring more clarity into the uh, topics that I'm speaking about. So if you will have any questions further, please post them in comments. And if you will like this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you. So in this video, I would like to cover how to interact with MongoDB from UiPath using the currently available activities. I will show you how to read the collections from the database, how to find or filter the entries, let's say, how to remove some of them and insert a new entry. I will show you some custom activities that were created by other users, but you can download them from a UiPath marketplace. As these activities don't cover everything that we may want to do with the MongoDB, I will also show you one workaround how to, as an example, update an entry in the database. For those who might not know, MongoDB is an open source document-oriented database program. It is classified as NoSQL, that means the entries in the database are not stored as in relational databases, but in JSON-like documents with optional schemas, which for me was uh, from the first time a little bit confusing when I start work with MongoDB. To follow me in this video, all you will need is UiPath Studio. And of course, if you wish to see what's going on in the database, a MongoDB Compass tool would be handy. So if you search for uh, MongoDB activities on UiPath Marketplace, you will come across two activities packages. First one is MongoDB Collection Data to Data Table. So let's just briefly about this one. So it's a cool activity package from Binamra Barik with one activity. What the activity is doing is actually getting the collection from the database and outputting it as a data table. This can be a convenient way how to get the data from the database as it will actually output a familiar data type. I guess most of you already work with data tables and even though they can be a little bit complicated to understand for the first time, they are easy to handle. The only drawback of this activity package is that it cannot really properly transform to data table uh, cases where your MongoDB collection has, let's say, sub-entries, an object, uh, because MongoDB can store entries, uh, multiple entries under one, let's say, um, column. So in that case, the results may not be really perfect. But for getting simple entries from a simple collections, this could be the way to go. However, Today I want to talk about this activities package, which is actually really nice. It's called Mongo Activities for UiPath and has been created by Shivam Kaushik. I hope I spell it correctly. Using these activities, you are able to connect to Mongo database, to get Mongo collection, find some um, entry inside the collection, also delete some entry from the collection and insert a new entry into the collection. However, there is no update entry. Activity. But I will talk about it later and we will create a small workaround. This activity package actually has a really neat installation guide. And if you read the installation guide through, you will be able to set it up. So let's go together and set it up according to the installation guide. I'm starting with an empty project in UiPath Studio. So first we will install the packages. Let's go to manage packages. And we are searching for two things. First is the generic MongoDB driver. We will search for this in all packages. Type exactly mongodb.driver and you will find this package. Install this package. Then we go to marketplace and search for the mongodb activities package that I showed you recently. This one by Shivam Kaushik. There's only version one, so let's mark it for installation and click save. Now we can see these activities here. Next, I will open a new sequence. Let's call it Mongo test. The next thing to do, and you have to do it for each workflow, is to go to imports and import three namespaces. The first is called mongodb.bson. The next one is Mongo activities. And the last one is mongodb.driver. 
thanks to these three namespaces, everything will work correctly. So now let's explore the activities package. You can find the activities package between your activities and you can see that there are five of them. Obviously, we will start with the first one, which will be connect to Mongo. Let's drag and drop it. There are a few things that we have to supply for this activity. First is your connection string. So enter your connection string into the first field. The second one is the name of your database. In my case, it's test. And the last field, which is also the last property, is the variable that this activity actually outputs. So let's create a new variable, Mongo database. Let's check the data type. It's MongoDB driver, Mongo database base. Okay, lovely. We will need this variable for the next activity. So now let's retrieve some data from some uh, collection. In the database, I have a collection called Roman test. In this collection, as you can see, I have some fields and some uh, data. So let's try to retrieve those. For this, I will use get Mongo collection activity where there are three fields to fill in. The first is the collection name, which is Roman test. The next one is the database. That would be the variable that we created before, Mongo database. And this will be the output. So the new variable that will hold the collection. So let's call it Roman collection. We can check the data type of the collection. However, this is iMongo collection of MongoDB Bison documents, which may not be familiar for most of you, and it also wasn't familiar for me. So we need to do one more step to get the data in some sort of understandable format. We will continue with the find activity. Actually, the name of the activity is a little bit confusing. I believe the best name would be simply find. So the find activity allows us to simply transform the collection into a list of documents. Yeah, it says it list of basin documents. Uh, and also it allows us to narrow down the results to, to filter actually the collection based on some, um, let's call it a query. First thing, I want to supply a collection to this activity, which will be my Roman collection. Then there is this filter query. This is a little bit tricky because it takes a data type of Bison document, but I will show you how to do it. First, let's say we don't want any filter. So we provide an empty Bison document. New Bison document with empty brackets. And as you may see, here's a little hint. So when we are creating new Bison document, just for those who want to go a little bit deeper in it, uh, there are some ways how to actually initiate the Bison document. Uh, but we will leave it empty for now. And let's store the result into some variable. So let's store it as like a find result. Now, when I take a look at the find result data type, I see it's a list of MongoDB Bison document. So list is familiar type for me and the Bison document, we will work with it. We know that it's similar to JSON. So now I will go to use the good old for each. And I will specify the type argument as the Bison document. This one. Because each of the item is a Bison document. And here I will put find result variable. So far so good. Now we will be looping through the results. So how to access let's say each column, or yeah, you can see here in the form of table, I have column ID, column name, column age. So let's type all the names from this uh, table. To output the names, I will use, for example, log message. And simply using the temporary variable item with brackets. And as you can see, it gives me three hints. I can either access it by using an index or a name or something else. So I will go on with name. So I want a column called name. <laughs> and that should be it. In case this is not a string, then of course you may need to do some two string things around. However, all these fields are strings in my database. So let's try to run it. And I will be able to see it in the output. Let's make it a little bit bigger. So I will hit run file. Now it is done, and in my output I can see 
all the names from my database, Nico, Marek, and Anupar. So this works easily. I can change it to H, run it again, and I'm getting the result from the another column, let's say. So, so far we are able to connect, to find the collection, and to get some data from it. That was pretty easy, wasn't it? So this is how to start with MongoDB activities. This is what we just tried, to get the Mongo collection and find, and loop through the results. Now let's try the other thing, get a collection and delete some of the fields. I will delete the activities for each and the find, and I will keep just the connect to Mongo and get Mongo con collection. Let's try the delete many activity. To delete some entry, the third thing I have to supply is the collection. As you see, there is no need to add the Mongo database variable again, because the collection is still bound to the database. So even if it may feel like we are not changing anything, in reality, this is connected to the database and it will actually do the change. I will demonstrate how it works on an example. Let's say I want to delete the entry where it says Marek. For this, I need to pre prepare also a filter query, which will be the BSON document. New BSON document. And here, one of these options is actually um, a name and value, this one. So that's a simple way how to, let's say, filter uh, the results, or filter the collection and delete one thing that will fall under the criteria. You can delete many things. So let's put here as a first argument, a first parameter, let's say, name, which is the name of the column, and mark on the second one. By this, it should delete the entry where it's name Marek. Let's run it. And now let's check the database. I will refresh the data. And you can see that the entry where was the name Marek disappeared. So this is how the delete many works. Of course, if there will be more uh, names, same names as Marek, all they, will, they all will be deleted. So be careful with this activity. The next activity will be insert one. So let's see how we can insert a new entry into our collection. So this is our collection and let's just delete the delete many activity and put there insert one activity. Again, I have to supply the collection variable and a BSON document describing the element. So there are many ways how to insert a new element. The new element has to be the BSON document. So let's go with new BSON document. Let me do this bigger actually. When you put the first bracket in, it will give you all the possible ways how the BSON document can be created can be also passed as a dictionary. I will go with this one. It accepts multiple BSON elements. You can imagine BSON element being some piece of a BSON document. So to add a new entry with the current structure, which is ID name and age, I will go on like this. New BSON element, now in the brackets. Name of the, let's call it column, name, which would be Pavel. And the next one will be new BSON element with H to be 12. So let's say a really young person uh, called Pavel with H 12. If I run this, and then I will check the database refresh it. I can see there is a new line with the name Pavel and H12. Maybe you're asking yourself, what will happen if the column names won't match? Let's try it. And let's try to refresh it. And it actually works. And this is a strange way how MongoDB actually works. It created a new column with the new names, and you can see what is the result. I wanted to show you just as a part of uh, example of how to work with MongoDB. However, I am no expert for MongoDB, but it seems 
pretty interesting for some use cases. Let's delete this one. And also the columns are gone. It works differently than the traditional SQL uh, databases. All right, so that has been insert one activity. We covered find, delete many, insert one. And as I said, sadly, within this package, there is no activity to update. So in order to perform update of some certain field, let's say you want to update a status or you want to update some number inside the MongoDB collection, I was going for some solutions and I ended up using workaround with InvoCode. You can download it actually in the video description. And it's this file, Mongo update field that I created. I have to say that I'm no C Sharp expert, so if this will work for you, that's cool. But maybe for your purposes, you will need to adjust it a little bit. So let's check what is it doing. It's actually taking as an input arguments some of the fields that we need. So let's quickly explore the input and output arguments. There are most of them are input arguments. The first important is the Mongo connection string and the Mongo database, which is the database name. In my case, it was test. And then there are five additional important fields. First, the collection name, that's obvious. And then let's say we want to update a field based on other field or maybe based on the same field. So we will actually do some filtering by some field of some value. And then once we actually filter the collection by this uh, set of variables, the next two in arguments will be field to update and value to update, which will be actually the field which will get updated. Okay, maybe this sounds a little bit complicated, but I will show you in an example. So as this is a workflow that is intended to be used as invoked workflow with, uh, within a different workflow, let's create a new sequence. Let's call it Mongo test update. And let's invoke the Mongo update field snippet. You can see that it's asking for arguments. So let's fill them in. First, I will fill in the Mongo connection string and the Mongo database and the collection name. My collection is called Roman test. So let's say I want to update age of Nico because he just got birthday and he's no longer 24, but he's 25. So based on the name and the value of a column name, I want to change a value of a column age. So inside a filter by, I will write name. Filter value will be Nico. A field to update will be age. And the new value to update will be 25. In this example, you can see that I'm using strings for all the data types. However, maybe in your use, you will need to change data types and adjust also the code inside. That's all. Optionally, I can save the variable of the modified entries so this I can check if anything will, was modified or not. But it can work like this. So let's try it. I'll save it and I will run it. See, Nico is 24. Now it's running. Let's check it. And now Nico is 25. Easy as that. So if you want to do some updates of a, of, of a certain field, you can use it. You can download it from the first link in the video description. You can also download the first activities that I was working on together with this Mongo update field workflow. So I hope that you learned something new and thanks a lot Shivam Kaushik for creating these activities. If you have any questions related to this topic, please ask them in the comments and I will try to answer them. I would like to thank you for your attention. If you would like to extend your knowledge of RPA, particularly UiPath, I recommend you to watch other RPA Friday videos or register to our Robot ICT community forum and uh, sign up for the RPA Fridays and for this channel. All links are in the video description. And now the only thing I want to wish you is to have a really nice, happy automation. Thank you for watching and see you next time.